Hello and welcome to Multiframe Webinar 1, Video 1 on Working with Geometry. My name is Phil Christensen and I'll be taking you through this webinar series of videos to help you get the most out of Multiframe. Let's start out by looking at the setup that we must do before we start using the geometry commands in Multiframe. First we need to use the size command from the view menu to set up the overall size of our model. We'll probably want to use the grid command to set up our geometric grid for snapping while we're drawing. And if we're going to be sketching in 3D, we'd like to use the drawing depth command from time to time to set the location of our 2D working plane. Finally, you'll find the structural grids command useful for setting up structural grids for the key locations of floors and frames within your model. Let's move over to multiframe and see how these commands work in practice. If we start out sketching in the frame window in multiframe, we go to the view menu and choose the size command to set the overall size of our model. So I'm just going to set my model to be 20 by 10 meters. And I'm going to use the grid command to set up my geometric grid. This is just like the geometry grid you find in most CAD programs, with a slight difference that you can have a different spacing in the vertical direction compared with the horizontal directions, and you also have independent control of snap and visibility. But if that geometry grid is turned on, then if we start sketching to draw members, you'll see that the cursor automatically snaps to the grid and the tooltip shows us our location on that grid. As well as the geometric grid, we have the structural grids. The structural grid manager allows us to create any number of structural grids. So I'm going to start out by creating my first one, which I'll call floor. And this is a grid that lies in the XZ horizontal plane. That means we can define the height of the grid above the origin. And then for the grid lines themselves, we can specify the number of grid lines in each of the X and Z directions. For each of those grid lines, we can give them a name and we can define the location or the spacing between grid lines. So I'm going to make my grid spacing slightly irregular in both directions. So if I click OK and I switch to my 3D view, then we can see we've set up our grid uh, with the slightly irregular spacing and you can see the grid labels on my structural grid. If I start sketching now, then I can easily snap onto those points on the grid while I'm sketching to put points at a desired location either on or off the grid. While we're working, it can be useful to have multiple grids in action. So if I go to my structural grids command again, I'm going to create a second grid. This time I'm going to create it in the vertical XY frame and I'm going to call it frame X. This time the location is defined as a distance forward of the origin along the Z axis. And I'm going to have the same number of grid lines this time, but I'm in the X and Y positions. And so to match with my other grid down below, I'm going to use the same irregular spacing in the X direction. So now we can see that both of our grids are displayed. And uh, so I can sketch within one particular grid or I can sketch between the grids. So I can go from one grid to another to put a member that runs between the two. Or more likely, I can start out by sketching a frame in the vertical grid, so I can sketch the key locations of my frame members in the vertical grid, and then I can select those members and use my duplicate commands to make copies of the frame in the other direction. So having the grids there makes it very easy to set up my structural geometry to match the desired locations of my frames in my model. That completes our brief introduction to geometry setup in multiframe. Thank you for watching.